you generate internally. Keep running. We need to balance and we need to fly. No, fly wire or not fly. No, we need to keep up with the engine. Your engine is internal. You take a lot of fuel and you keep running. No, that is your engine. Huh? Design yourself. <laughs> yes. We will see why we cannot fly. Okay? Why this massive plane with 75,000 kg flies and why we are not flying? Yes. Because of bone density. Your bones are much lesser when compared to that aeroplane, right? Sir, yeah. Ah. We are not streamlined. Streamline. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we don't have enough energy. Oh, good. That is a good answer. Huh? We, don't have, uh, it, we don't have aerodynamics. You don't have aerodynamics. But the plane also the, doesn't have aerodynamics by itself. When it stands at ground, right? It generates itself by moving. Yes. You need gravity. You have gravity. The body is different from us. Huh. Body is you you have your body, right? So you keep your hands like this and keep like this. Yes. So I like to fly fly. Ah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> we we look at it. Just now most of those things we will we will look at it. Why we cannot fly and why that plane flies. What makes it so this 130-foot aircraft can climb thousands and thousands of feet into the air? Is it the two jet engines, both of which produce around 27,000 pounds of thrust? Or could it be the massive 112-foot wingspan? Again, two things were told yeah. during that. One was the size of the engine and the energy required. Somebody told we cannot generate that much energy. Who told that? You told, right? So we cannot generate. If you have to fly, you can fly, but you need that much of energy. The second thing is your hand should be much larger than what you are for you to get that lift. Okay? Yes. We are not made of those materials. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, correct. So that is what I was mentioning. So what is it about this aircraft that allows it to fly? Well, you're about to find out when the aerodynamics go flying. To find our answer, we'll climb into the smaller Cessna 172 SP Skyhawk. It may not be a 150,000 pound jet, but the same principles apply. Most people probably understand that on an airplane, the wings are what allows it to fly, while the propeller or jet engines drive it forward. This is a good base of knowledge for your average Joe. However, a pilot should know there's much more to it than just that. In total, there are four forces that act on an airplane on flight. These four forces are length, thrust, weight, and drag. We'll start with lift and work our way from there. Now, the wing itself doesn't generate lift. It's more about the shape of the wing. The wing is shaped like an airfoil. This is very important. This is what actually makes an aeroplane take off from ground. Lift. Okay, lift. And how does it get lifted? Just see the surface of this wing. These kind of designs which allow a bit of differential airflow over the aeroplane wing and below the aeroplane wing is what is finally needed. So somebody was telling we are not aerodynamic. Who told you yeah, we are not aerodynamic? Yes. Our hands are not designed and aerodynamic. All our hands are like a cylinder, right? Cylinder, circle, square, rectangle. We have some shape here. Huh? But yeah, no, no, sharp pointing is different, but you need to look at that curve. The curve is like this, right? That is what makes you can the. Fly like this. Ah, <laughs> you can fly, but you will do like that. But the wind, when you are running, has to go through you. Okay? Yeah. I noted two forces which help the airplane fly forward, thrust and lift. Yes, correct. So that is what we are looking at here. Now, see this. This particular shape is called airfoil. Whoever is interested in aerodynamics, aeronautics. 
Aeronautical engineering subsequently, remember this word. All through your life you will come to know, you will have to deal with this particular word if you are interested in becoming an aeronautical engineer. Because this is the shape which is called airfoil and this is the shape which will actually generate difference of the wind speeds above and below the wings and that is what will be needed for the aeroplane to lift off. We will go to the first one. I am not an aeronautical engineer, I am an air traffic engineer. I am a physicist, basically. Wind passing over the wing called relative wind is what helps the airfoil to generate lift. When air is moving across the airfoil, it... Relative wind. Can, can anyone tell what is relative wind? Is the wind coming in from balance? No. Yes. The wind goes below and on top of the wind. No. What is relative? Yes. The same wind, the, uh, the plane is doing same wind cutting through the wind and making a little of the wind go above the wing and little of the wind go under. What is relative wind? What, is the, what does the term relative mean? Because this is what I was not taught when I was like you. Yes. Ha ha ha. That is something. That relativity is different. Yes. Huh? Connected. Connected. No. <laughs> Most important thing. When you are standing, you will not feel wind on your face, right? In this room, you will not face. When you keep running fast here, what happens? That is called relative wind. Because though it exists, we don't realize when we are at rest, we will realize it when we move. That is relative wind. Because we generate it. It is existing already, but you are not feeling it. But when you run, you will feel, right? All of you, have, uh, run, you do running in school, right? Athletics. Huh? So, uh, sometimes my dad goes really fast in the car. Uh, I put the window down and uh, I feel the wind really fast. Ah, winds are fast, yes, right? So, so that is relative wind. Yeah. But there, the, there is, that is why the question is, when you put your hand out or head out on an empty road when the car is going, and suddenly if you stop the car, will you get the wind? No. You will not. Sir, that is relative wind. Sir, if your hand, you can't feel it. Yes, yes. So, and that time if you are going very fast and uh, take your head out of the window, mm -hmm. you don't feel like you are getting oxygen. Ah. So, there is suddenly uh, the wind comes towards Yes, because a lot of pressure is applied down your nose. So, you will not be able to inhale. Yeah. That and is the issue. You cannot breathe very Yes. Fast. Okay. So, know that word. The force can move faster across the top than it is along the bottom. We slow moving air across the bottom. Puts more pressure upwards on the wing than the faster moving air across the top. If you understand these two things, you know flight. When wind blows, because as I told you, when you are running like this, you get winds on your face, right? So when the plane runs, this wing goes into the air, right? The winds blow like this on this area. So what happens is somebody told, a lot of you told, some part of it goes above. Some part of it goes below. Here is where the trick is. Whichever wind goes below is actually slower. Because it is slow, there will be high pressure here. There are two different terms. One is the velocity or the speed of the wind and other one is the pressure. On top, the velocity will be more, pressure will be less. Okay, I will tell you what it means. How many of you have played or deflated your cycle tire? When you open your cycle tire with a filled up air, does the air come out or go inside? No. Why is it not going inside? Because there's no air inside. Why? Because the air is outside. The air is outside also. Why is it not going inside? Because there's a hole. No. High pressure inside. Yes. The main thing there is the, air is pushing the law of nature is wherever there is high pressure, it will always flow towards low pressure. If you know this concept, here what is there? High pressure. Here? If this is your cycle tire, if this has got air, where will the air go? Here or here? This way. Right? That is how it will go, right? 
If this is your cycle tire with high pressure, if you open the nozzle, what happens to the air? It goes up, right? If it goes up, what happens? It will push the wing up. So you get lift. And for that, you need faster winds to flow. For that only, you have the propeller, you have the jet engines, everything in front. Yes? Yes? Yes. Because the uh, wind is moving slower. Slower, yes. So it stays for longer under the wind, that makes it higher. Absolutely. On your road traffic, how many of you, when you go in your school bus, uh, when traffic congestion is there, will you go faster or will you go slower? Slower. When you go slower, how many vehicles come together simultaneously? Many. Lot of vehicles, right? So the pressure in that particular area increases, right? So many people come and then you keep doing all this. Everything happens, right? Yeah. Simple thing. So, High pressure below, low pressure above, and it will be. Sir, yes. Sir, sir, uh, you said the wing, the wing below the wing uh, is slower. Yes. Uh, so there's high pressure on the wing, right? Below. But then, yeah, below. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so but the plane is also going really fast, right? Yes. So the slow wind will uh, go behind. So how will the high pressure? Good question. Good question. Yeah. And it is actually the winds. There is a differential speed. Winds. Going over the top of the wings are faster and ones flowing below the wing are slower. Okay, so as the plane keeps increasing its speed, this will be faster, this will be slower. But still, there will be difference. But as you said, you are right, there will be difference in the speeds of, it will keep increasing. The wind speeds below the wing also will keep increasing progressively with the engine thrust. Okay, yes. Here, in the wind now, hmm. it goes like this. There, there can go above for a bit, right? Yes, yes. But in the old planes, the wings are like this, right? Hmm. So, Even in the old planes, if you need, I will show you some pictures. Yeah, the wings they crash frequently because the air molecules get uh, stuck. Absolutely, there. there are some turbulent flows there, that is why they get stuck. Yes. So, when a bird flies, hmm. Uh, we, will, we will, for that moment, leave two things out. Birds and helicopters, because they are a different methodology altogether. Birds, bees, all of them fly in a different concept altogether. Okay? So we will only uh, uh, currently, because those are all different concepts. Yes. And how does the plane go up? Not Yes. Yes. So yes. why yes. doesn't it? Because the metals in which the aeroplane is made up of have a very low freezing temperature, even below the ones which are existing there in the sky. Yes. Then how does then why can't you know where jacket can go inside the uh, stay outside the plane? You can stay outside the plane, but what happens is you will not have oxygen. You will not be able to inhale. You need to inhale oxygen, right? Because as you go oxygen above, oxygen also decreases as you as you go above. Yes, that is the reason. Yes. Yeah, I know. Actually, when I saw the movie Atlas, uh -huh. uh, and yeah, I thought that Mount Everest is like twenty-eight thousand feet yeah. above mean sea level. Yes, it's a size scale. That is the height at which airplane normally flies above. Uh, sir, so there is a lot of carbon dioxide. So when I saw the movie, I mean, people were. Yes. yes, they will put the cylinder behind. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's like a bag. Okay, so did you understand? Yes. Uh, are there air buses and Concord airplanes in this airport? Air buses are there, so many air buses are there, but no Concord. Concord is grounded now. Concord doesn't fly Concord anywhere in the world, right? Because it crashed. No, not necessarily. A lot of planes crash, but Concord is uh, not fuel efficient. Somebody was talking fast. about fuel efficiency. No, I was, I was, I was. What is Concorde is a supersonic aeroplane. It can fly the speed of sound. Yes, it can fly faster than sound. Okay, see, if if you if I speak, you are hearing it, right? By the time the sound waves come from my mouth to your ear, it will be faster than that. What is the speed of sound? Anybody knows? One point milliseconds. Some three thousand hundred kilometers per hour at sea level, something. One point milliseconds. One point milliseconds. And some in 500 to 700. 
you are studying first standard okay i studied first standard 35 years before i will tell you it is 330 meters per second i have not reviewed for this class how do i remember that Anush, we did ask you a sound job, you remember? Did we do or no? Did you, sir? Yes. Remember that, 330 meters per second. If you do like this, the sound has already traveled to 330 meters. What? Okay? Yes. It's, it's not the technology that makes concert. I mean, of course, technology makes concert faster. The sonic boom happens because you travel faster than sound. You travel ahead of sound. So sound waves actually travel ahead. Sound waves are nothing but vibrations, right? So, yeah. so, so, so vibration concert fly? Uh, Concord is grounded. Grounded in the sense it is not manufactured anymore. You don't have engineers, you don't have airlines buying that aeroplane. So it, it stopped. Sir, sir, it is the most famous plane that I Yes, one of the famous planes. Sir, yes? Sir, uh, if, if all the air pushes the plane up, then how will the plane land? Very good question. I was asking. Because I was actually because thinking sir, somebody will be asking sir, this. Sir, the gravity yes. weight. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, in the old place, 